All right, so get this. Today's deep dive is going to be a little different. Ooh. Yeah, we are ditching the, the spreadsheets and reports, mm. and uh, we're going to dive into something way more fun. Okay. Detective fiction. Yeah, right, I'm intrigued. Right. Yeah. So specifically, we're going to be looking at this series called Web Wilder, Last of the Full-Grown Men. Okay. And uh, trying to figure out, is this thing worth picking up? You know, mm. is it any good? Yeah, yeah. So think of us as your like pre-read team, okay, sifting through all the evidence oh. to see if this uh, this mystery, you know, <laughs> lives up to the hype. I like it. I like it. All right, what do we got? And the first thing that caught my eye, yeah, was this description of Web Wilder himself. Okay. And they're painting him as this like classic like film noir detective. Oh, cool. You know, okay, like Humphrey Bogart but with a smartphone. Interesting. That's a cool concept, like trying to recapture that old detective feel. Yeah, yeah. But in a modern setting. Exactly. It's like classic noir, but with, you know, updated technology. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And get this. The paperbacks themselves. Yeah. They're designed to look like those old school pulp novels from the 50s. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. With two novellas printed back to back. Hmm. Huh. One of them's even put it upside down. Okay, now that's that's commitment, and they're really going all in on that retro aesthetic. I know, right? <laughs> they're definitely trying to capture a certain vibe. Definitely. That's cool. So what's the first case about? What's what's the story? Okay, so the first novella, it's called Mole Men. All right, I am, I'm already on board. It's got crop dusters. Okay. An alluring femme fatale named Ruby Falls. Classic. Gotta have the femme fatale. And actual mole people living underground. Wait, hold on. Like, literally. <laughs> literally. Living under the city. Wow. Okay, that's not what I was expecting. So we're going full on, like, B-movie with this. It's like they took every classic detective trope and then just threw in a, a handful of crazy for good measure. I mean, it's definitely unique. You've got your classic noir elements. Yep. You know, femme fatale, shady characters. Right. And that's the thing. I can't tell if this is, like genius level genre bending yeah. or just completely bonkers like mm -hmm. is this a gritty crime thriller mm -hmm. or a coen brothers film i see what you mean it's definitely walking that line which honestly makes me even more curious to see how they pull it off and then we got the second novella the it, doll the doll okay fractured barbies psychotic moms like battling over their kids oh okay it's it's another wild ride. So still keeping with the uh, oh, yeah. out there concepts. Definitely out there. But okay. but this one, I get this vibe, like reading between the lines. I think this one's got like a darker edge. Mm, interesting. Yeah, because the first one you were saying could either be like a really serious crime thriller. Yeah, yeah. Or like just a wacky comedy. Totally. Yeah. So this one maybe skews a little more towards the thriller. Yeah. Greed being <laughs> like at the heart of it all. Greed. Okay. Yeah. Which greed is like a classic... You know, classic motivator. Noir, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you throw in, you know, psychotic moms and fractured Barbies. Right. I, I don't know. That's that takes it in a different direction. I think it's like a layer of unsettling on top of the classic uh, greed and crime. Right. Yeah. Like they took this wacky premise and we're like, okay, now how can we make this seriously dark? Right. Right. Play with those expectations a bit. I like it. Yeah. And speaking of interesting twists, yeah, let's talk about the creators behind this whole thing. Okay, because these guys, these guys ain't your typical uh, mystery writers. All right, all right. So what what are we talking? Like, what's their background? Okay, so first up, yeah. you got Shane Caldwell, Emmy winner. Okay, has written Super Bowl commercials. Wow, even worked with Jeff Foxworthy. So talk about range. Yeah, you don't see that very often like someone who can do a Super Bowl commercial right. and then write like gritty detective fiction. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It makes you wonder what kind of humor are we talking about here? Yeah, cuz that's a pretty broad uh, you know, so, spectrum of humor there. Is it that like dry observational humor or is it more like yeah. off the wall given the whole mole people situation? Yeah, yeah, cuz Jeff Fox wrote these very much, you know, like down home, observational, but yeah. then you've got these kind of outlandish stories. Right. It's like, what is going on in this guy's head? Yeah. And then you got the other creator, Steve Boyle. Okay. And this, okay, get this. Ready? This guy, he's worked with everyone from the Beach Boys to Garth Brooks. Wow. Okay. So the musical theme is continuing here. Totally. Over 90 awards for his work in television. 90. That's that's a lot of awards. That's impressive. That's a lot, right? <laughs> like, what does this guy do with all of his awards? I don't know. Probably has, like, a whole room dedicated to them. 
But that says something, right? Like 90 awards, that's got to be some serious talent when it comes to, you know, visual storytelling, especially with music videos. Yeah. That's going to influence how you approach a story, right? Making it visually compelling. Totally. Like, and that makes me think, you know, when we were talking about the descriptions, how they were so like vivid and almost cinematic. Yeah. I bet that's got something to do with his background. It's got to be. It's got to be. That kind of experience, it seeps into everything you do, even if you're not consciously aware of it. And now for, like, the most intriguing part of this whole thing, Webb Wilder, mm. the detective himself. Yeah. Apparently, he's a real person. All right, I'm hooked. Tell me more. So, get this. Webb Wilder, he actually started out as this comedic character, like, back in the 80s. Interesting. So, the authors didn't create him from scratch? Nope. He's got a whole history. Even starred in a short film. Wow. So, they're taking this existing persona with his own baggage and dropping him into these stories. Exactly. <laughs> Which makes you wonder, how much of the real Webb Wilder is in these books? Is it all just fiction? Or are they drawing on his, you know, real-life personality? Right, right. It's that blurring of fiction and reality again. And wait, it gets better. This guy, he has an actual music career. Like, he mm -hmm. shared the stage with some big names, even popped up in a Peter Bogdanovich film. Are you serious? This is wild. Okay, now I really need to know what kind of music does Detective Webb Wilder play? Right. It's like, how do you even begin to categorize this guy? Mm -hmm. Detective, musician, comedic personality. Maybe it's all connected somehow. It's like this weird feedback loop of creativity. And speaking of unexpected twists, guess what else? What? Don't tell me he's also a world-class chef or something. Yeah, almost. Apparently, Webb Wilder is currently a DJ on WMOTFM. Get out! No way! Okay, that is amazing. So we've got this classic detective fiction vibe, but with this modern, almost absurd twist. There's the sharp humor, but also potentially dark themes, and a writing style that just pulls you in. It's like they took everything we thought we knew about detective fiction and tossed it in a blender, and the main character might be more real than we initially thought. This is definitely a series that keeps you guessing on multiple levels. Absolutely. So if you're looking for a mystery that's a little offbeat, a little genre-bending, and a whole lot of fun, you might want to check out Webb Wilder, Last of the Full Grown Men. Yeah, just be prepared for a wild ride. Get your copy of Mole Men and The Doll at Barnes & Noble or Amazon or ask your local bookseller for Webb Wilder, Last of the Full Grown Men, from Worm Ranchers Publishing.